what's the best thing that got me, what got me started was uh, Philippe Petit, the guy who walked the World Trade Building on a tightrope, a little French man that actually walked the World Trade Building on a tightrope. I was about, I was a young kid, I don't know the exact age, but I knew I, the guy actually walked the tightrope of the World Trade Building. It was on TV and it was on in, in the newspapers. And then he went, to, he went to court and he was sentenced to walk the castles at Central Park. On 86th Street, there's two castles, he had to walk. That was his uh, fine. And I went there as a kid and I got, I got to see this guy's show at Central Park. He's walking these, these, these ropes. But the guy walked the World Trade Building on a tightrope. To me, that was, that's, that's still, the, to me, the ultimate stuff. No one can top that. I don't care what, what you do in the world, this man walked the World Trade Building. This man uh, stuck up there as a construction worker and, uh, and shot this boar to one side. Uh, it was all planned how he did it, but it was amazing how he did it. It cost him a lot of money to do this thing. He did it illegally. And once the owner found out that he was up there, the cops called him, the owner said, uh, don't hurt him, because the World Trade Building was not renting any uh, uh, office space. It was new, people were scared to move in there. And he brought all this news media to the World Trade Building. I saw the documentary. The owner said, don't hurt him. Saw it, man. And at that point, everybody knew about the World Trade Building. We crossed the Philippe Petit. They took it down now. They took it down, terrorist. And that's why I had a breakdown, basically, on that. Because it was, like, very depressing. Uh, part of my life went down when the trade system went down. I know a lot of human life is lost. I feel bad about that. Uh, Philippe Petit walked that sucker and terrorists took it down. You have certain people come to see you every day. You recognize We have a following, huh? a big following. You come to see Philippe, has a Charlie, me, Benton Will. There are people who bring spot. people to see Philippe or bring people to see yeah. you. Or, or, Tourists, or they, come, yeah. they come every year and they, come, they bring people, friends, to see us in the park. Right. It's like one big happy circus there. So when you're performing in Washington Square Park, yes. then Will and Ned aren't performing. Of course, I'm by the arch, okay? Yeah. Philippe's uh, on the other side of the park. It's in the fountain, it's all spaced out. We all a lot of the it. audience is spaced out, too, they, they, in Washington they, they, Square Park. <laughs> how, do that. how does it work with a high wire? You do two things, street juggler and high wire artist. Mm -hmm. How is that? With, well, as a very wire about. worker, uh, I should not be put in the category of street entertainers. Yeah. I am here as a street juggler, and yeah, know I my other profession is So that's a separate thing. Oh, yes, it's so a, here's another, the street it's jug. It's very hard to collect from it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's not at all the street performing, even though when I was uh, actually uh, performing um, at the top of the World Trade Center a few years ago, I felt that I was, it was maybe the biggest street performing event ever made, in a sense, since it was without permission and I had the people stop and look up. In that sense only, but truly it's my profession to do in the, to work on the highway. I only work in okay. the streets. I never in the last uh, 19 years I performed on five continents, did a TV show with my street juggling, I never worked inside of a theater because the street is a street for me. It has to have the, the dogs and the police and the rain. The police situation throughout the world in the That's last uh, 15 years uh, regarding street performing is very different and has changed. And personally, I've been arrested more than 500 times in my life as a street performer. Arrested? Yes, arrested. And uh, that was started in France where for the last for 10 years I would go at the same spot because I always find my theatrical spot in the city. And uh, they just, you know, we... Uh, but now? Time. Now it's the same. Now there is no one place on earth where you could say you can really perform. If what yeah. you mean by performing is to express yourself freely, you might uh, apply by certain guidelines, you know, stay over there or uh, not too late or whatever. But if you want to express yourself, then uh, everything is forbidden and that's uh, not even worth talking about. It's like the rain, it will happen again and again. So you find the hassling still goes on? Yes, and in a way that's an interesting uh, part of street performing. Um, street performing, I hope, will never be legal. If it is legal, um, it will be dead in a sense that uh, you're always finding a spot, you're always uh, waiting for the rain to stop, you're always hiding from the cop, and that's his life in it. Well, how do you feel about Philippe's comment? It's the, best. The, risks, uh, the risk attracts, the risks attract 
Feliz. Not the risk, the flavor of that unique theater that is the street. And once you put a sign on it and a, and a board with a, with a hour, you don't have that kind of theater anymore. They have tried in San Francisco, for example, to say this place is for a street performer. Mm -hmm. Come, perform a we pass an audition. Here is your stamp. Come from 1242 to 347. Mm -hmm. That's not the street. I prefer the road then. That was really mind blowing. And the man has a fantastic street show. He juggles type, he juggles uh, balls, fire sticks, walks a rope, uh, and watches Square Park. L later on in life, I was doing a show in Washington Square Park, and he was working there. That was amazing to me, that Philippe Petit, the hero of, of my childhood dreams, we were sharing the same park together. And you will see a video that, uh, that I gave you that, that's, uh, of me, Philippe Petit, on an A&E talk show with Terrence Turkle and uh, Colin Tremblin, a uh, Charlie Barnett, comedian that, that did a lot of movies. Philippe is sitting there, and I'm sitting there with my hero. I got one man I walked the World Trade Building sitting on one side, and another man, Charlie Barnett, who's in DC Cab, Mavi Vice. Two of my, uh, Charlie, did, Charlie did a lot of comedy. Charlie Barnett, a lot of uh, blue comedy, but he was the best comedian in, in, in probably the world. He died now, but you got one clean guy, Philippe Boutique, you got one dirty guy there. Let me ask, let me start by asking about heckling. Say, Tony Vera has a, a wild act where he's blowing this, this um, whistle and he's, and he has flame. He, this kid, this ringer kid comes out of the, of the crowd and he's balancing him on a chair and everything. Then some heckler comes. What do you do about it? Well, there's, there's a lot of ways of uh, dealing with a heckler. You can do it the nice way or the easy way. It depends on who's heckler. If he's, if he's tough, you can do it the hard way. I had about five fights this year with guys in the, in the park. They come to my show, they make trouble, they start hitting you, it's punch you because they're jealous of you. Right. So sometimes you have to just hit them back sometimes, but it's, it's not the right thing to do. I hate violence, but once right. in a while you, can't, you have to do it. But well, what about the non-violent way? Is there a way in which you integrate the heckler into the act? Anybody? If I get a wino that's like, um, that's, that's very outspoken and he's a character, he's all bummy, he benefits my act, you know, because I, I tell jokes. So like, I just use him to my advantage. So a lot of times when I'm having a rough show, I'll, I'll, I'll hope a wino comes along. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Man, I don't like when they shot the boat. I like the boat, because he came to Harlem to see us. He got out the limousine in Harlem, and he kissed the ground in Harlem. <laughs> Harlem! That's some shit I wouldn't even do up there. <laughs> I can understand when they shot Reagan. That's an American tradition. Every 20 years, they shoot a president. <laughs> now I know why they say give to the United Negro College Fund. As you can see, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. A lot of times, you do get people that are on winos that will, uh, like Tony said, they're just envious of you, yeah. and uh, they just want to upstage you and take your show. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you do, like, have to deal with them uh, on a physical mm -hmm. level. How'd you think of blowing a whistle in your act, uh, instead of talking? Because I'm half Puerto Rican and Spanish, I talk kind of fast. This is the easiest way. I can whistle and talk all kind of languages, Greek, Italian, Chinese, everything. You're, you're a multi-whistler. Yes, yeah, it's, it's great. You can whistle in many languages, then. It's all one language, but they, they, they understand the whistle. It's all one language to whistle. I do is um, it's like a lot of the cops they come and see my show and once in a while the sergeant comes to the park or whoever <laughs> that's it and, that's that's the park, and the, the main thing that they, they they don't like is amplifiers guys with guitars with a big amp then you got the guy here with three amps and the guy over there with three amps and then pretty soon the park is just a bunch of noise with drums and stuff 
So um, what I do to keep them off me, they don't bother me because all I do is talk. But once in a while they will, you know, because I get a, get a huge crowd and then they, they, they just want you to break it up. This is an interesting pocketbook. Look at this shit. We got we got reefer. Oh. We're going to get fucked up. Put that on camera. She's a drug addict. And she's also a fucking freak. She's a big goddamn freak. And you know that. Oh. Hey. Do you remember? Hey, fellas. Remember when we had to go through to get a virgin? You had to wine and dine her, take her out for months, then you had to beg. <laughs> Remember, I used to beg my ass off. I used to go, come on, baby, please. <laughs> Just let me put the head in. <laughs> as soon as you get the head in, ah! <laughs> hey, girls, remember how you went home? <laughs> what I do is after the show, I'll come up and I'll spend some time talking to the cops about, you know, baseball games. <laughs> so I got it from Dale Carnegie, you know, I got it on him. <laughs> I talk to them and then next thing you know, they're in my show, they put a dollar in my hat and I, I got them. In other words, so I, f I try to stay on the good side of the cops. And, uh, and, and whenever I see someone drinking beer in, in the crowd, they're not supposed to. I'll say at least respect the cops. Don't drink it in front of them. <laughs> and then uh, and, you know stuff like that. That's great. You got a lot of cop jokes to... in your uh, routine. Uh, no, they're, they're all like in their favor. And that's and I'm in the middle. So you, you got. I used to be really dirty, but now I'm kind of clean. I'm, I'm going to lot cleaner now. But between those two characters and Rick Avellis, who. made the movie Ghost, he played Willie Lopez. He was a big part of my life too. Those guys kind of molded me. Thanks for being with Thank us. You. Thank you. Thank you.